Welcome to the Copper Spice YouTube channel, and thanks for joining us. In this video, we want to define what the C++ standard library is and ask, is there just one? What is the C++ standard library? When a new version of the C++ standard is created, what is it they are releasing? The C++ standard is simply a document. As developers, we expect that newer versions of our compiler will contain the features which were added in updates, like C++17 and C++20. In this video, we are going to define the difference between the standard template library, the C++ standard library, and the C++ core language. Which one is actually updated when you install a new version of your compiler? Are there multiple implementations of the standard library or the core language? What should you do when a type trait is added to C++17? Your compiler says it supports C++17, and yet the type trait is missing. Well, this is exactly what we experienced. The standard template library, commonly referred to as the STL, was based on work developed by Alexander Stepanov, and later on with Meng Li and a few others like David Musser. The basic idea was that generic programming should be used as the foundation for software development. Stepanov began his research around 1979 and worked with Musser on a library for the Ada programming language. They shifted from Ada to C and then C++, and in 1992, Lee joined the project. Andrew Koenig became aware of their work and was very intrigued. He encouraged Stepanov to present his innovative ideas to the C++ committee meeting in the fall of 1993. The committee asked for a formal presentation, and the work was accepted as part of the C++ draft in 1994, over five years before the first C++ standard was ratified. If Koenig had not been persistent, or if Stepanov had not been willing to take this risk, his work might have remained as just a research project. There were several proprietary libraries starting to emerge, and they were incompatible with each other the C++ community would have struggled without the unifying work of Stepanov and Lee. We encourage everyone to read the papers listed here, which provide additional details about the history of their work and the STL. What was most striking to us was how the template and iterator terminology we use in C++ today was originally presented in the mid-1990s. So what happened when Stepanov presented his early version of the STL to the Standard Committee? They were so excited by what he showed, they asked him to create a formal proposal describing the library in more detail. The committee wanted to incorporate the STL as part of the C++ draft standard, which would later become C++ 98. The main components in the STL were algorithms and data structures, which were both implemented using templates. Using templates allowed them to take advantage of compile time polymorphism. The STL was written using generic programming, namely without using specific data types. Then at compile time, when the data types are known, the compiler can make informed optimization decisions. This is in contrast to runtime polymorphism, which is where the data types are not known until the application is actually executing. For example, this involves late bound or virtual method dispatch. Runtime polymorphism is the basis for object-oriented programming. The key insight of the STL was the design of the algorithms, which used iterators. This provides reusability and extensibility. For example, there's no need or requirement to re-implement the sort algorithm for each new type of container. The sort algorithm can be written one time and then applied to any container which provides random access iterators. The standard template library, or STL, 
consists of four basic kinds of components, which were designed and intended to work with each other. As with modern C++ containers, the STL containers were available to store homogeneous data. Each container was optimized for a different set of operations. For example, vectors allow random access to any element, while a map provides fast lookup by key. While C++11 added refinements to support move semantics, the basic design of vector has really not changed since Stepanov and Lee first proposed it in the standard template library. The iterators we use today have also been slightly refined, but are fundamentally unchanged since their original implementation. The algorithms in the STL were mainly for sorting and searching. The functions in the STL were actually function objects, which is the operator open-close method found in a variety of classes. The purpose of a function object is to allow a developer to call what looks like a function, but is actually an instance of a class. At the time, the STL was revolutionary because it provided various function objects. With the addition of lambda expressions in C++, the need for function objects has diminished. With the release of the standard template library, which was several years before the C++ 98 standard even existed, developers could use this library to construct a vector and pass an iterator to a generic algorithm. This was cutting-edge generic programming, and C++ was leading the way. So now let's take a look at the C++ standard library, which contains a massive amount of functionality. There are multiple classes to support things like IO strings, atomics, threading, and type traits. For example, threading has classes like STD mutex, STD future, and STD promise. Type traits are used to query attributes about a given data type. There are classes like STD is underscore pointer, STD is underscore constructible, or STD enable underscore if. There are functions like STD terminate and a variety of classes which do a specific task like STD any. What is interesting and very important is that the containers like STD vector and algorithms like STD sort were taken from the standard template library and added to the STD namespace in the standard library. This happened with the release of C++ 98. People often confuse the STL and the C++ standard library. One of the reasons this happens is that a large portion of the C++ standard library was derived from the STL. We believe the C++ 98 standard would not have been as valuable without the addition of the STL functionality. The C++ standard has never actually contained anything called the STL. Within the current standard, there is no distinction between the containers and algorithms which were derived from the STL and all of the other classes or functions. Referring to the C++ standard library as the STL is more than incorrect. It is misleading. If, however, for some bizarre reason, you are in fact using the third-party library called the STL, then you are using code which was written before 1998. You may want to consider updating to at least C++ 98. The C++ core language is not the same as the C++ standard library. The core language of C++ contains the fundamentals, like declaring a class, the syntax for calling a function, and constructs. Control flow keywords like if, switch, and try must be part of the core language and cannot be part of a library. Keywords like auto, const expert, and const must also be implemented at the compiler level. 
These features are implemented in the C++ compiler because they are the fundamental building blocks of the language. The compiler has access to the internals, which makes things like optimization possible. In contrast, the functionality, which is part of the C++ standard library, can be implemented by anyone. Yes, any developer can implement their own vector class, but you should question if this is sensible. For Copper Spice, we implemented a string class, which supports UTF-8 and is easy to extend for other encodings. This was not a choice we made lightly, and we wrote this class only because STD string does not handle encodings and could not be extended. There are several C++ compilers from different vendors, and there are also several different implementations of the C++ standard library. These are the three most common implementations. The libc++ library is usually bundled with the Clang compiler and is popular in the embedded development community because of the open and permissive MIT license. The libstd c++ library is usually bundled with the GCC compiler and is more commonly used on Linux platforms since it was available long before the LLVM project began. Around the end of 2019, Microsoft released their implementation of the C++ standard library as open source. This was a welcome move and good for the community. This is the C++ standard library implementation you are most likely using if you are compiling with Visual Studio. With multiple C++ standard libraries to choose from, which one should you use? This is a question most C++ programmers do not even consider until they discover they're missing a C++ feature they need. On Windows, the compiler and standard library are usually packaged together as a unit. When updating your compiler, you will also get an updated version of the C++ standard library. However, on other platforms, installing a newer compiler does not necessarily include an update to the C++ standard library. We found this out the hard way. On one of our test systems, we were using Ubuntu with Clang 3.8 and ran into some compiler issues as we started using newer C++ 17 features. The obvious solution was to update to Clang 7. However, the build still failed. After some crazy debugging, we noticed the compiler was failing to compile type traits which had been added in C++ 17. Although we had successfully upgraded the compiler, we were still using an older version of the C++ standard library. The solution first involved installing a newer version of the C++ standard library. The second part was using an obscure compiler option so Clang would actually use the new standard library. Normally, you will not need to update your C++ standard library, since this happens when your OS is updated. But on those rare occasions when you update just the compiler, you may need to verify if your C++ standard library is new enough. For more information about the CopperSpice project, please visit our website at www.copperspice.com. Thanks for watching. We hope you found the content of value. If you have any questions or feedback, feel free to leave a comment on this video or send us email. Please make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel and come back in a few weeks for the next video.